everyone, this is Ben. Over the last few months, the coronavirus and the disease known as COVID-19 has forced us to change the way we live our lives. Families are learning to navigate a new environment where even normal activities like going to the grocery store can be nerve wracking. And there's so much information out there about what to do and what not to do, it can get overwhelming. Since keeping each other safe is our highest priority, it's worth spending the time to learn the basics on how to avoid catching the coronavirus and stop it from spreading. In this video, I'll go over simple, easy to follow safe practices, and I'll also give you some information about what to do at ASC to keep the workplace safe. So, pay close attention for the next few minutes, and if you learn something new, please share it with your family and friends. Educating yourself and others increases our chances of staying healthy. Let's start with how it spreads. The coronavirus spreads among people through droplets that come from the mouth and nose when we cough, sneeze, or even talk. The droplets come out when we breathe. They remain in the air for a short period of time, then they land on surfaces nearby. These droplets are tiny, so we can't see which surfaces have them and which don't. A person gets infected with the virus when they inhale these droplets in the air or touch surfaces that have these droplets on them and then touch their face. Since we know this is how the virus spreads, there are many things we can do to lower the chances of catching it. Social distancing is a term you've probably heard a lot by now. It means to deliberately increase the physical space between yourself and others. Do not gather in groups and stay away from crowded places like malls, restaurants, and parties. The minimum distance apart you should be from others is six feet. It takes some getting used to to think this way, but here's a few things that will help. You can visualize six feet by walking up to someone, holding out your arm toward them, and asking them to hold out their arm to you. When your hands are about a soccer ball width apart, that's six feet. We aren't used to standing so far apart, and you'll notice that people have the habit of walking closer to you than they should. Politely remind them to take a few steps back when that happens. And don't get offended if you're the person being reminded. Instead, be thankful that someone is looking out for your help. There are some situations when you will be closer than six feet to another person. For instance, going to the grocery store, visiting the bank, or picking up medication at the pharmacy. You should wear a mask in those situations. If your interaction will be brief, say for around a minute, stand side by side and do not face or speak directly at the other person. This reduces the chance of respiratory droplets traveling from one person to another. Likewise, hold your breath, if you can, when passing someone on the street or in the hallway. It's not a guarantee that it will prevent the spread, but it reduces the chance of inhaling droplets in the air. Finally, don't make jokes about social distancing or people who are practicing it. It may feel unusual, but making a joke suggests to others it's not serious. We're all doing this to reduce the spread of the virus and save lives. That's a serious thing and everyone should be serious about it. Washing your hands is the easiest thing you can do to fight coronavirus and it's also one of the most effective. Though most people's hand washing technique could use a bit of work. The right way to start is with soap and water. Experts think warm water is more effective at breaking down the virus than cold water so use warm water if it's available. Put soap on your hands and rub them together to make a bubbly lather. Once the lather is bubbly, scrub all parts of your hand. That includes your palms, your fingers, the areas between your fingers, your thumb, and the back of your hands. People tend to forget their thumb, the back of their hands, and the areas between their fingers and the lower parts of their palms when washing, so pay special attention to those areas. This whole process should take about 20 seconds. That may not sound like very long, but most people spend just about six seconds washing their hands. If counting to 20 is boring, sing yourself happy birthday twice. When you're done, dry your hands with a paper towel and use it to turn off the faucet and open the door. That'll keep your hands from getting dirty as you're leaving the bathroom. If you don't have soap and water, hand sanitizer is okay too. The virus is killed by alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol like with hand washing, 
Make sure the sanitizer covers all surfaces of your hand and rub it on until your hands feel dry. Whether you've been at home or at work with the kids, it's a good idea to wash your clothes regularly. Use hot water and put clothes in the dryer afterwards since this will help kill the virus. Some experts recommend using detergents with a bleach compound. I'll include a link in the video description with a list of detergents and other products that are effective in fighting the coronavirus. Take off your shoes and clothing when you get home from work. Have a separate laundry bag ready for those clothes or put them straight in the laundry. If you use your jacket or a sweater to open doors and touch buttons, you should wash them too. Don't touch your face. That's one way the virus gets into your system. I know, that's a lot easier said than done, but constant reminders will help. Raise awareness about not touching your face with your family and your coworkers and talk about it often. Keeping it in people's thoughts will lower the number of times they do it. Though, if you do have an urge you can't ignore, use your arm instead of your hand. It's not ideal, but it's less likely to be contaminated. Washing surfaces is as important as washing our hands. After all, our hands touch those surfaces. The virus can last for up to 72 hours on surfaces, so act as if all surfaces are contaminated. Make sure the surfaces you must touch are clean and minimize contact with surfaces in common areas. For those hard to avoid commonly touched surfaces like door handles and gas pumps, use a paper towel tissue or disposable glove to avoid directly touching the surface. If you don't have any of those items available, make sure to wash your hands immediately afterwards. Surfaces that you touch regularly, like your phone, your desk, your mouse and keyboard, and your car steering wheel should be disinfected regularly. Use wipes or a disinfecting spray to thoroughly wipe those surfaces clean each day. If you don't have a disinfecting spray, you can make your own by mixing bleach with water. Four teaspoons of bleach per quart of water is enough to kill the virus. Masks are a tool for preventing the virus's spread from your mouth and nose. For a person who is infected, it stops droplets from infecting others. For a person who is not infected, it gives slight protection from inhaling droplets. Masks also prevent you from touching your nose and mouth when you are wearing one. Because there is a shortage of high quality masks, you can make your own from household materials such as bandanas, t-shirts, or other cloth products. If you're wearing a homemade mask, make sure it fits snugly, but comfortably, over your mouth and nose and against the sides of your face. It should be secured with ties or ear loops, include multiple layers of fabric, allow you to breathe without restriction, be laundered and dried each day, and be removed without your hands touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. To do that, pull the mask off using the ties or loops. Try not to touch the mask itself with your hands since they or the mask could be contaminated on the inside or on the outside. Once you remove your face mask, wash your hands. You should also wash the mask each day with soap and hot water. There's never been a more important time to talk about safety with your family. The actions each family member takes in keeping themselves healthy affect other members of the household and can ultimately affect us here at work. I know this is especially tough right now for parents whose kids are home. Everyone in the family is probably itching to get outside. Unfortunately, for the moment, the safest thing you can do is find fun activities indoors. That doesn't mean you can't exercise. Try a family competition to see who can do the most jumping jacks, push-ups, lunges, or squats. Play music and dance, or go online and find a home workout video. There are many free ones available. When you do go out, limit the number of trips you take to stores and other public places. It is a good idea to wear a face mask too, though continue to maintain that six-foot distance between you and others. Think through what you will need to do for the next week so you can buy all items in a single trip. Also, think through what you'll need to touch. Bring disposable gloves or paper towels to avoid touching keypads and payment machines. If you forget those, remember to wash or disinfect your hands when you leave. 
If you are going outside for exercise, avoid crowded places. Now is not the time to take the kids to the playground or on walks with friends. Don't pet the neighborhood cat or dog. Unfortunately, their fur is a surface that could also carry the virus. In fact, if you are walking and see other people coming towards you, give them as much space as possible to get by or cross the street. Your mission is to avoid contact with other people and their pets when going out. Just like at home, the actions you take at work have an impact on the health and safety of your coworkers. The better you do at social distancing and practicing good hygiene, the greater chance you have of preventing spread. So, what are some things to plan for? There are many times in a day when you will be tempted to approach someone else. While we are practicing social distancing, think of other ways to communicate apart from face-to-face -face interactions. For example, if you are walking with someone, allow them to walk six feet in front of you and to the side. You don't need to walk shoulder to shoulder. If you need a meeting, have it over the phone or a video conference whenever possible. If it's necessary to meet face to face, hold that meeting outside where there is plenty of ventilation and enough room for everyone to stand more than six feet apart. Also, try to avoid having more than two people in any room at a given time. Though we have increased the frequency that surfaces are cleaned at work, act as if all surfaces are contaminated. Before sitting down to work, use a disinfectant wipe to clean the desks and conference room tables, computer mice and keyboards, and chair armrests. Minimize door contact by using your arm, a single finger, or a napkin to touch the door handle. Then wash your hands afterwards. Well, that's it for this video. Whether you are at home or at work, remember to practice social distancing. Wash your hands and the surfaces you touch. Wash your clothes. Avoid touching your face and wear a face mask when appropriate. If you follow these steps, you'll give yourself, your family, and your coworkers the best chance at staying healthy and safe. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy, guys.